a, the second of the big theorems of calculus. This is the mean value theorem or Rolle's theorem. They're kind of one and the same. Um, we did extreme value theorem the other day. So the mean value theorem, uh, we're going to start with Rolle's theorem. Uh, and what Rolle's theorem is, here's the, the mathy definition, with the, which the mathy definition never really makes much sense. But if your function is continuous from A to B and differentiable on A to B, and notice um, continuous including A and B, differentiable between A and B, uh, and if F of A and F of B are the same, uh, then there must be some value C on the interval such that F prime of C equals zero. That makes perfect sense, doesn't it? Uh, what this is saying is basically you have some function that is differentiable. Now, differentiable means you are smooth. There's no corners or cusps or discontinuities or anything funny uh, from A to B. So I'm going to draw myself a nice smooth function that goes from A to B. What this is saying is that if you start and finish at the same point, then there has to be some value C between A and B where F prime of C is zero, which means you have a horizontal tangent. So it doesn't matter how I draw it. I must have a place with a horizontal tangent somewhere between A and B as long as the function is differentiable. It uh, doesn't matter how you draw it. Maybe I'll try to draw it. I'm going to try to sneak up on it. I'm going to maybe do this and then suddenly come back down. But it doesn't matter. As long as you're nice and smooth, you must have some point with a horizontal tangent. Uh, you could have a whole bunch of them. You could go up and down and come back up. As long as you're smooth and differentiable, if you start and finish at the same place, then you must have some point. In this case, there are two points between A and B where your tangent is horizontal. And that's what Rolle's theorem is saying. If you have a differentiable function that starts and ends at the same y values, then you have to have a horizontal tangent somewhere on that interval. So that's Rolle's theorem. And Rolle's theorem is very specific because you have to start and finish at the same point. And Rolle's theorem has an offshoot called the mean value theorem. Uh, which is almost the same thing. Notice the, the given conditions are the same. You have a function that's continuous on A to B, differentiable from A to B. Uh, the difference between this and Rolle's theorem, though, is we no longer have to start and finish at the same place. So what this one says is that your C, your slope, has to equal F of B minus F of A over B minus A. And hopefully this right here looks familiar because that is simply your slope that you learned in Algebra 1. So the slope from A to B. Well, what I've drawn here is a function that is differentiable from A to B. And I've drawn this little secant right here representing the slope from A to B. What mean value theorem says is there has to be some point on the curve where your tangent has the same slope as the secant. So my tangent will be parallel to the secant. So let me get a picture of that secant right here. And we'll have a tangent that is parallel. There we are. We'll have some, ah, that's not going to work. I'm going to have to get, get rid of that. Here, I'll do this. Undo. I just redraw that. There we go. All right. Uh, so I have to have some point where my tangent is parallel. So I'm just going to carry this line. That's the same slope as the secant. And I have to have some point where the tangent achieves that slope right there. There has to be some point on the curve, and that would be my C, where the tangent is parallel to the secant. And just like the case with Rolle's theorem, it doesn't matter how you draw the function. As long as your function is differentiable, as long as you draw a differentiable function, so maybe if I go up and come down and go back up, I have to have some point where the tangent is equal to the secant, is parallel to the secant. So I have a point right here. So there's one C, so right here. But I also have a second one because I have a point also down here where my tangent has the same slope. So if your function is differentiable, you must have a tangent that is parallel to the slope from A to B. That is what the mean value theorem is saying. Okay. Uh, a couple of problems where you could use either Rolle's or mean value theorem. Um, in this case, I'm specifying Rolle's theorem. So first it says determine if Rolle's theorem applies. Well, in order for Rolle's theorem to apply, and that means f of negative 2, in this case, must equal f of 0. So let's find out what those two values are. f of negative 2, negative 2 squared is 4, plus that would be negative 4 minus 4 is negative 4. That's a lot of 4s. Okay, let's do f of 0. 0 squared plus 2 times 0 
minus 4 is negative 4. So they do begin and end at the same point. So that means Rolle's theorem does apply. Now, uh, since it does apply, I want to find out, uh, I want to find the value of c such that f prime of c is equal to 0. So to do that, we'll find f prime of x, which will be 2x plus 2. And we'll simply set that equal to 0. Subtract 2, divide by 2, and you get x equals negative 1. So uh, an x-coordinate of negative 1 is the place where my tangent has a slope of 0 on this interval. And that's using Rolle's theorem. Uh, another case of Rolle's theorem, uh, determine if it applies, and if it does apply, uh, find the value of c. So start off, we need to show that f of 1 is equal to f of 4. So 1 squared minus 5 times 1 plus 4 is 0. Let's plug in 4, which will be 4 squared minus... Uh, 5 times 4 is 20, plus 4. <laughs> That's funny. I actually tried to pick one that Rolle's theorem didn't apply. And I failed. Uh, well, so I plug in 1 and 4, and I do get 0 for both of them. So I start and end at the same place. And it doesn't have to be 0. I mean, it, just as long as you start and end at the same place. So in order to find out where my value of c is, I'll take the derivative 2x minus 5 needs to equal 0. And it occurs at an x-coordinate of? 5 halves, uh, which is a 2.5, and 2.5 is on the interval 1 to 4. So there we go. Rolle's theorem does apply because I started and finished at the same place, and it, um, my horizontal tension occurs at an x-coordinate of 2.5. Let's see, a couple more problems. Now here I'm getting into more of the generic mean value theorem, which, uh, you know, really if you understand mean value theorem, then you understand Rolle's theorem, because Rolle's theorem is, is a very specific case of mean value. So for the most part, we will be dealing and using the words mean value theorem, uh, even if we're doing Rolle's theorem, because Rolle's theorem is the mean value theorem. It's just a specific case. So uh, here we have a function, and I'm looking at the interval 0 to 2. The mean value theorem guarantees that f prime of c equals some number somewhere on the interval, and I want you to find c and m. Really mean, remember, mean value theorem says f prime of c is equal to f of b minus f of a over b minus a. So let's start by finding f of b minus f of a over b minus a. That will be what f of 2 minus f of 0 over 2 minus 0. And I'm going to assume you all know how to do that, so let me pause this and work it out. There we go. So I... Uh, plug in 2 and 0, and I get the slope from A to B is 3, well then I know that F prime of C, I must have some point where the derivative equals that value. So to find that value, I'll find the derivative, which is 8x minus 5. I will set that equal to the slope I want to achieve, and we'll solve for x. And boy, this is a nice number. Add 5, divide by 8, and you get x equals 1. And 1 is on the interval 0 to 2. It just so happens to be right in the middle. That will not always be the case. That will not always be the case. Um, it depends on the function. If it's a cubic function or if it's like the square root of x or something like that, um, things can change. So don't always assume that you achieve your magic x value right in the middle of the interval. Okay, one more problem, then we'll call it a day. Uh, let's see, I give you a table that gives the position of a particle in motion. Does the particle ever stop? Hmm. Well, if something is stopped, if it's not moving, that means you want your velocity t equals zero. But it would be really nice if we had an equation for this, and then I could just take the derivative, set it equal to zero, and see if that happens. Um, but we can't do that. So I'm going to have to find some other way to prove that the velocity equals zero. Um, well, I see that my position is 2... 7, 12, then 11, then 7. So I actually, I go up and then I come back down. And I can kind of visualize, I can think, well, if my position goes up and then I come back down, I'm going to have to stop at the top. So I definitely know that we stop because I, I increase, my position increases and then decreases. So there will be a stopping point somewhere up there. But then I throw in this pesky justify your answer. And that's not good justification. Um, what I'm going to do to justify the answer, uh, I need to see if it's possible for me to find some point, because velocity is a slope. I want to know if I could like find two points A and B such that 
the slope of my position is equal to zero. Can I find any place where my average slope or my average velocity is equal to zero? Because if I can find that, then I know that my instantaneous velocity must be zero. And what I'm looking at here is the point 27 and 57. Because I'm looking at that and I can see that, ooh, if I do s of 5 minus s of 2 over 5 minus 2, that gives me 7 minus 7 over 3, which is 0. So what I've done is I've found two time values where the, the average slope from 2 to seven, two to 5 is 0. And if that happens, then I know that my velocity must equal 0 somewhere on the interval 2 to 5. So the answer is yes by the mean value theorem. And that would be your justification.